Sysstatus is that thing that rolls off the fingertips whenever you're using looking for today. The cloud and UTC. You may have heard of this thing called the cloud. There seems to be a lot of vendors pushing you to move your databases to the cloud, Oracle being one of them. And yes, that is true. The cloud seems to be the future. That's where things are going. Here's the question that came in. We're moving our databases to the cloud, but cloud databases are all UTC by default. Let me caveat that. I assume this person is moving to a database service, as in the database is being managed for them. Obviously, if you just go get some server hardware off our cloud or anyone else's cloud, then you can do whatever you want in terms of you know, time zones, etc. But if you're moving to a managed service, the most likely thing that's going to be the case is that database is probably running UTC time zone. But I said, this means all of our code references to SysState are now invalid. Is there anything we can do? Let's do a quick review of why they've got themselves into a bit of difficulty because I'd be willing to bet this is something that we would all probably encounter because I know when I'm looking for the current time, I go sysdate, you know, etc. But in reality, we probably should be a bit more precise. Here's why everyone uses sysdate. If I go buy a server, I'll install it and it'll say, where do you live? I'll go Perth, which is GMT plus eight, and the server will be running in GMT plus eight. I put a database on that server and the database goes, ah, oh, the OS is running in Perth. So I'll run in Perth as well. Most of my clients will probably be connecting from their machines in Perth. And even if my clients were coming from say the other side of Australia, which is GMT plus 11, they're probably gonna be using a system where they go, ah, oh, yes, it's a Perth system. A lot of us have systems which are very, what I would call insular to our geography, you know, interdepartmental apps, etc. We have certain apps, obviously, which generally nowadays are growing in their availability. They used to be available on site. Now people can get to them on their phone or elsewhere. And of course, as companies become more global, they get accessed from everywhere. Because we're so used to systems all running in the time zone where we're sitting, when someone says, show me the sales for the last hour, I go, well, what's now? Sysdate, lop off an one by divided by 24, that's an hour, there's my query what could possibly go wrong? Here's the problem. I brought up my phone and took a screenshot of my clock feature. And it shows me that I did this this morning. You can see at 11.44 a.m. in Perth time, it was 11.44. I have a couple other zones on there because San Francisco, sometimes I have meetings with people in head office and so forth. It was 7.44 p.m. the previous day. And London, which is effectively just my way of picking up where GMT is, nice and easy, it was 3.44 a.m. On my database, when I do select sysdate from Joule, it says it's 11.44 because I'm living in Perth, my database is in Perth. But obviously, if I talk to the cloud database I have running on the London region, it says 3.44 a.m. because that's the time in London. Or is it? Because if I log on to my ATP free instance, which actually is housed out of the Sydney cloud region for Oracle, it also says 3.44 a.m. And that's definitely not the time it was in Sydney then. This is because it's not the London time. It just happens that London coincides with UTC at this particular point in time, namely Greenwich Mean Time. So even when I talk to my other cloud database, my ADW warehouse is running in Phoenix cloud region, I also get UTC. All these managed services are generally running UTC. What's the drama? Sysdate is the date and time on the server and therefore it's not the time that I'm experiencing right now. If you want that, we have a function that's been there for a fair while called current date, and that's the Titan time on the client. And so if you actually look, for example, if I connect to my ATP instance, it says the time for on the database was 1119, but the current date, I ran this later on today, is now 1919. That's 20 past seven, that 80 minutes ago when I put this slide in. When I pointed this out, the person said, well, that means we, for a lot of our code, especially the, the user facing stuff, we need to go change the source code to references from sysdate to current date. A, we've got to find them all and B, that's a big job and really high risk. Is there any other way? And so here's the solution we provided for them. And I thought you'd find this interesting. Okay, for a long time, we've had a facility called SQL Translation Profiles. And really, 
they weren't designed for what you're about to see. They were originally designed, and I'll do a demo to prove this, to actually say, I'm coming in from say Postgres, or I'm coming in from say SQL Server, but I want to run a query on the Oracle database, or I might be doing a complete migration you know, from one of those platforms to Oracle. I don't want to have to rewrite my SQL. Can the database layer do it for me? And it's a fairly powerful facility. Let's explore this. I'll create a profile called Silly, and you'll see why it's called Silly in a second. Here is my first translation. Whenever I see select star from scott.emp, I'd like you to rewrite it to scott.department. I'll grant that to Scott. I turn that SQL translation profile on for this session. I run select star from scott.emp and nothing happened. It still ran select star from scott.emp. I was expecting it to automatically reroute it. This is because this facility was originally designed as being for foreign platforms talking to us. SQL Plus is not a foreign platform. It's sitting there inside the database. And therefore, we actually had to do this. We had to set a particular event, event 10601, to say, even though I'm coming with a database connection, I'm coming from SQL Plus, just assume that I'm actually a foreigner. I'm coming from some strange platform. When I do that, we actually see the SQL translation profile in action. It says, I do a select star from EMP, and we actually get the results from select star from DEP. Now, obviously, that's a nonsensical demo. Uh, yeah, and anyone, anyone who's rubbing their hands with glee thinking SQL injection, here we come. Uh, yeah, that's true. Obviously, you use this with some due care. But let's get rid of that SQL profile and do something a little bit more intelligent. The first thing I'm going to show you here is the fact that we realize that this is actually a fairly powerful facility. So rather than it only being limited now to things that come in from a foreign source, we've actually adjusted this now. I think this change came in in 18C. I'm creating a profile called demo profile, but now inside the API itself, I can say it's not just to be applied when foreign SQL syntax comes in. This attribute is saying, do I only apply the profile if the SQL is a foreign syntax? And I'm saying, no, it's false. So this will be applied for Oracle syntax as well. And then I've done the same thing. I registered, you know, once again, a bit of nonsense, change scott.emp to scott.dep. The advantage of that is, is once I've granted the SQL translation profile and turned it on for my session, no more event 100601. It just happens straight out of the box. I think it was 18. We changed this such that now it doesn't have to be just foreign SQL syntax coming in. You can nominate using attributes whether you want it to apply for all SQL syntax. So let's have a look at how we can now tackle the problem at hand. I'll drop that profile. Now I'm going to create a package. And this package is called a date translator. And these APIs have to be effectively, they're hard coded. In fact, it must be one called translate SQL, must be one called translate error, and it must take these particular parameters because you'll see where this is going to be used shortly. And here's my package body. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my incoming SQL text, translate any occurrences from sysdate to current date minus 50 by 365. Now, the reason I'm changing it to something which is 50 years ago is such that we get a difference in output, even though I'm running on my local database. I'm not going to run this on a cloud database. So I wanted to dynamically change the SQL such that the results I see with one query will disappear when it comes to a next query. And similarly, I'm going to change all occurrences of sys timestamp with current timestamp. Let's now create a, pr a profile. And here's where that package can be used. I create a brand new profile. As before, I said it's not just for foreign SQL, it's for all SQL. But I have this new thing. I have an attribute called what translator do I want to use? And it's the name of my package. So now as SQL comes in, it, it will call this package to do the translation because we've set this attribute for this particular SQL profile. I grant the SQL profile and let's see this in action. I haven't enabled it yet for this session. So I run select star from scott.emp. It just runs fine. When I do select star from scott.emp where high date less than sys date, I get all the rows because all the high dates are valid because I haven't turned the profile on yet. This proves that this query hasn't been translated because I still got all the rows. I alter my session to enable this profile. I run select star from scott.emp. There's no reference to sysdate in there, so it runs unaltered. I run select star from scott.emp where high date less than sysdate, which originally brought back all the rows. I now get none because this query has been dynamically changed from sysdate to current date 
minus 50 years. So we actually excluded all the rows just to prove that the SQL profile was actually working. It's done even before parse time. So if you actually go to Google at v.sql, we can see here's the one that came in before we applied the profile. And here's the one that came in after we applied the profile and we dynamically changed it. So you can see that this query got converted to this query using the SQL translation profile. Hopefully that shows you one of the cool things with SQL translation profiles. It used to be grab an entire SQL, replace it with this SQL. Now we don't have to be just foreign SQL syntax, so we can now do it on our own systems. But also we have these attributes like translation packages, which lets us now pick and choose elements of an incoming SQL and dynamically replace them with whatever we like. In this case, we can change sysdate to current date and sysTimestamp to current timestamp to solve hopefully the vast majority of the UTC systems for this person who's using a managed database service on the cloud. So hopefully that all makes sense.